Now, if you follow my channel, you know I just did my unboxing and first look at the brand new Surface Laptop Studio, the Surface Book replacement here for 2021. My full review of that will be dropping in the next day or so. But in the meantime, I also took delivery of the Surface Pro 8, probably the biggest refresh since the Surface Pro 3 as far as that Surface Pro line is concerned. Yeah, it was in a definite need of a refresh, that's for sure. It now has a bigger 13-inch display with smaller bezels. It's got an 11th Gen Tiger Lake processor, and it also has an improved Surface Slim Pen 2. Let's see if this all comes together to make this a winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look at the brand new Surface Pro 8. Coming up. And as we take a look at the specs in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Microsoft. I'm not being sponsored by Microsoft. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Microsoft is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now, this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Microsoft. Pricing starts at $1,099.99. And if you are a student, teacher, or in the military, you can get a discount over at Microsoft. Check out the link below if you're interested in finding out more information and where you can buy one. And this time around, I went with the entry level model. And there's a reason I did that. I wanted to see what most people who are not familiar with this device will get with this entry level model. Again, $1,099 is not cheap and it is definitely a price increase from the previous generation. I'm not quite sure I like that especially since you only get 128 gigabytes of SSD storage. For $100 more, you get 256 gigabytes of SSD storage. That's a lot better. But the good news is, is that you can upgrade the SSD yourself. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. But I am glad to see they no longer offer a SKU with only four gigabytes of RAM. Here we have an entry level model that starts at eight gigabytes of RAM, a lot better. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Lifting the lid, the first thing you're greeted by is the unit itself. Now we're going to get to that in just a moment. You do get some documentation, including a setup guide. And of course, you get a 65 watt AC adapter that has an extra slot for a USB peripheral. That's always good to have. And of course, you get the extension cord as well. And holding the unit for the first time, the first thing that strikes you is just how premium and high end this build quality is. Construction is first rate. The casing is made out of anodized aluminum and it comes in two colors, graphite and what I have here today, platinum. And with a weight of 1.96 pounds or 891 grams without the signature cover, this definitely is portable, easy to take with you on the go. Now, of course, the Surface Pro signature keyboard with the Slim Pen 2 does add some extra weight, giving it a little bit more bulk and heft. And speaking of those accessories, I did order the Surface Slim Pen 2 to use with not only the Surface Pro 8, but with the Surface Laptop Studio that I just unboxed. And I picked up the signature type cover. This is black with the Alcantara, of course, and it is a must-have accessory, in my opinion. And the keyboard has that rock solid feel to it, very sturdy, and I like to see that, especially if you're using it on a raised typing angle. The type cover connects magnetically, and it's a very strong connection. And once it is connected, it's not going anywhere. And just like with the Surface Pro X, you have a place to store and charge the pen within the keyboard itself. I love it. And if you want to raise typing angle, it sticks magnetically to the bottom of the display. But unlike past iterations, no part of that bottom display is hidden. It's all exposed. And that's pretty good. Good engineering. And I have to say the typing experience has been very good. I thought the keyboard had pretty good tactile feedback and had pretty decent key travel. And it did feel pretty solid even on that raised typing angle, giving it a really good, comfortable typing experience for extended periods of time. Now, there is a multi-stage backlight on it that allows you to get work done in a dark room or a dimly lit environment. It worked well against the dark keys. Now, it does have a glass precision touchpad that was super responsive. I thought the scrolling was very smooth and all the gestures work as you'd expect. Good job on that front. A little bit undersized though, but good nonetheless, especially on this very portable device. And it has some really sturdy hinges, allowing the kickstand to have a lot of friction, giving you the perfect viewing angle each and every time. Love it. 
And underneath that kickstand is, of course, the latch that is user accessible that allows you to replace the SSD yourself. Now, it is a smaller size SSD, not always the easiest to find, but if you do find it, you can expand out the storage yourself. Nice. Now, of course, I'm not a proponent for 128 gigabytes of SSD storage, so I would highly recommend you upgrading that or going with a model that has at least 256 and probably 512 or above. Now, as far as my unit is concerned with the included SSD, these numbers are not going to blow you away. Not the fastest reads or writes we've seen as of late, that's for sure. All right, let's talk about the ports. We'll start off on the right side. We get your Surface Connect port, and above that are two very welcome ports indeed. They're two USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, and they do support data charge and display out, so they're full service. The benefit, of course, is you can connect to external GPUs, multiple 4K monitors. You can connect to an 8K monitor, so you have a lot of possibilities when it comes to those Thunderbolt 4 ports. Now, above that is your power button. And moving over to the left side is your volume rocker up and down and a 3.5 millimeter headset jack to round out the ports on this device. Notably missing this time around is a USB-A port and you don't get a micro SD card slot either. All right, let's talk about what I think is the star of the show, and that would be its 13-inch Pixel Sense Flow display. A lot of changes here over the previous iterations, and they're good ones. It's got a resolution of 2880 by 1920, and for those keeping score, that's 267 pixels per inch, and of course, it has a 3 to 2 aspect ratio. Now, this is capable of going up to 120 hertz in terms of the refresh rate, but it is 60 hertz default out of the box, something to be aware of. And it is now a Dolby Vision display. So what does that mean? You're going to really benefit from the HDR content on this device. Nice. You're looking at some really deep blacks, excellent white points, good contrast, and you also have good color accuracy with a 1.55 Delta E score. Anything below two is considered good. And it does cover the color gamut pretty well. 100% sRGB, 75% Adobe RGB, 77% of the DCI-P3 wide color gamut, and 70% NTSC, making this a decent choice for content creators who do Lightroom, Photoshop, and of course, video editing. And Microsoft claims that this will get as bright as 450 nits. I actually measured slightly below that 441, not too bad. But one thing to note, this is a reflective display and there's no anti-reflective coating on it. That means you're going to see some glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions. Something to be aware of. And looking at the display, you'll notice that it is very similar and almost identical to what we saw with the Surface Pro X with the thinner bezels, the bigger display than the previous generations. And this certainly is a welcome addition, that's for sure. It gives it a more sleek and modern look. You gotta love it. And so far, the Surface Slim Pen 2 has been a nice improvement over the previous Surface Pens that I've used in past iterations. And I gotta say, that haptic engine on it really helps make it give it a more lifelike feel of pen to paper. And it does really help in terms of reducing jagged edges in terms of the lines. And it really did perform well for taking notes and sketching out artwork. So far, it's been pretty good. And I like the fact that it stores and charges within the keyboard cover. So you always have it with you. You don't have to worry about losing it sticking it to the side or something like that and that's been pretty good as well and i think having 120 hertz refresh rate certainly helps out the inking experience so this is the front facing camera on the brand new surface pro 8 a big upgrade uh, in the Surface Pro line, I think it's probably the biggest upgrade since the Surface Pro 3. Pretty significant. So it's an important device, in my opinion. Now, this is a 1080p, 30 frames per second webcam. Uh, is it good for Zoom? Is it good for any of your work from home needs? How is the audio quality as far as the internal mics are concerned? Let me know in that comment section below. Now, this is also an IR camera. So that means you can log in with Windows Hello with face recognition. Uh, there is no fingerprint scanner on this, but the face recognition works flawlessly. It's been an excellent implementation. Again, I want to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. So this is the rear facing camera, 4K, 30 frames per second. And as you can see, my pool, the jacuzzi, and you can see part of my house, of course, but, uh, let me know what you think about it in the comment section below. I'm, of course, I wouldn't be using this on a regular basis to take photos or videos, but it might be good for those in the vertical field who need to do some surveying and stuff like that. But let me know in the comment section below, what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know. And here's Max the dog, 
just hanging out by the pool, as you see there. What do you think about this, Max? Do you like the quality? Let me know in that comment section below. And of course, besides video, you could also take photos with that rear facing camera. Let me know what you think about these in the comment section below. Now, I just got this device into the studio, and right away, you're going to see that this Core i5 1135G7, a quad core eight thread processor is actually pretty decent for a mobile device, but it's not going to blow anybody out of the water in terms of performance. There's no discrete GPU. Of course, it has integrated Iris XE graphics, but for everyday tasks such as Microsoft Office, email, web browsing, consuming media, watching Netflix, Amazon, YouTube, this has been a really wonderful device. I've had no complaints whatsoever, but it is not a gaming laptop, but you can play some of the older titles. If you lower the settings, you will get playable frame rates the good news is of course there is two thunderbolt 4 ports so you can actually connect to an external gpu with this device and you should expect some better performance out of that core i7 model of course that will cost more money but again a little bit better performance should be expected now i do have the core i5 model and this single fan is found in that model as well as of course the core i7 and it does ramp up when you do put this under heavy load so you will notice it but it's actually pretty quiet and i didn't notice that the unit got overly hot either in terms of the thermals i'll bring you more of that in terms of the numbers in my upcoming full review but for those that are wondering i didn't find it getting overly hot or too loud in terms of that fan noise and you're looking at a 50.2 watt hour battery and i'm not expecting really great battery life in this form factor but i will bring more numbers in terms of the actual battery usage in my upcoming full review i'll give you some real world numbers but i would expect seven to eight hours maybe on this device but again your mileage may vary depending on what you're doing again i'll bring you all those numbers very soon but keep in mind, if you're going to use the 120 hertz refresh rate, that will eat up more battery life. You can expect of at least another hour or two using the 60 hertz. And I'm also happy to report that the sound has been improved going now with two watt stereo speakers with Dolby Atmos. And having Dolby Atmos really makes a big difference in terms of the spatial audio. The mids were decent, there was some bass, and it does get pretty loud. This has been a pretty good audio experience so far. Okay, let's bring it all home. What do I think so far of the Surface Pro 8? All new here for 2021. And I gotta say, this is definitely the biggest update since the Surface Pro 3 in that Surface line. And you gotta like that because some of the improvements here are definitely welcome and definitely needed. It's got a new, bigger 13 inch display with 120 Hertz refresh rate. Now dynamic switching will be coming to that refresh rate with an update coming soon from Microsoft. Not there yet. So out of the box, it's 60 Hertz default you can switch it off in the settings to 120 hertz now two thunderbolt four ports are certainly welcome here giving you the ability to connect to external monitors there's 4k monitors multiple you could also connect to thunderbolt docks and of course external gpus and the like replaceable ssd is definitely welcome here as well good laptop class performance but definitely good for a portable device the slim pen 2 with the haptics is definitely improved over prior surface pens and i'm really liking it and I like that fantastic 1080p infrared webcam that allows you to log in with Windows Hello. It's going to be great for Zoom and all your work from home needs. It does the job really well. Thinner bezels on that 13-inch display, and you get improved 2-watt speakers with Dolby Atmos. Now, the negatives, of course, is the fact that this doesn't have an anti-reflective coating. You will notice the glare and reflections in certain lighting conditions. No Type A port, as I mentioned. LTE will be available, but that won't come later, and it will only be available on the commercial version, and there will be no 5G. That's a little bit of a disappointment. And you also have an increased price this year with a starting price of $1099. That's a lot more than the starting price from last year, which I believe came in at around $800 or so. But this is a big upgrade if you're coming from the Surface Pro 3 or 4 or something like that. This is definitely one you want to look at. Now, of course, I still need to do my further testing to bring you all the numbers in my upcoming full review. That will be coming very soon. So what do you think about this bad boy, the Surface Pro 8? A uh, really nice improvement, a big improvement over some of the prior iterations. And I think the move to the bigger 13-inch display with the slimmer bezels, definitely a much-needed improvement, that's for sure. 120 hertz refresh rate is a definite welcome improvement. I can't stress enough how I enjoy navigating through the OS of Windows 11 
with a higher refresh rate. It actually looked really smooth and fluid. You now got 11th gen Tiger Lake processors powering this. I have the entry level Core i5, but of course you could always get the Core i7 for even better performance. But as a portable device with an improved Surface Pen, the Surface Slim Pen 2 with its haptic feedback really certainly helps on this. A really nice type cover, good keyboard, good touchpad on it, nice backlight on it. It really all comes together to make this a really nice portable device. But while I'm curious to know what you think, let me know in that comment section below. What do you think about the Surface Pro 8 and its higher price tag? The fact that you have to buy the pen and the keyboard separately, adding to the cost. So it's definitely a very expensive proposition, especially when you look at some of its competition that include the keyboard and pen in the box. So something to be aware of. But I'm really happy with some of these major improvements, especially the move to that bigger display with that smaller bezels and the higher refresh rate. That's to me is a big, big win here. But I'm curious to know what you think. Let me know in that comment section below. Now, don't forget, I will have my full review coming very soon. I will test the battery life, the display, the performance, the thermals, everything you come to expect in one of my reviews. Give me about a few days or so, and I will bring that to you very soon. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in that comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.